Mr. Secretary, thank you for coming. I, I must say many Americans have high hopes riding on you, and uh, we, we, want, we wish you every success. Um, speaking before the National Science Teachers Association, uh, you said that science is all about questioning assumptions, testing theories, analyzing facts. They're basic skills that prepare kids not just for the lab but for life. We're doing kids a disservice if we don't teach them how to ask the tough, challenging questions. I couldn't agree more. Um, under the AARA, you have the five billion, approximately five billion dollar race to the top funds. Thank you. I'd like to know if you plan to use any of those uh, in connection with science education. Secondly, following along this, um, the 2010 budget actually trims the funding for the math science partnerships slightly. It is way below what it was when it was the Eisenhower funds uh, 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 a decade back. I think it's an essential program. I'd like to hear what you're going to be doing uh, to increase your, uh, th that program or if you have some other way that teachers are going to get the professional development that they need and deserve uh, in science education. Third, third point I'd like to ask you to touch on is foreign languages. Foreign language instruction isn't easy. It should start early. It should be an integral part of even the elementary curriculum uh, all the way through. What foreign language reforms do you propose? Um, and along that line, uh, uh, are you going to create an assistant secretary for f uh, international and foreign language study. There is now a deputy assistant secretary. Yeah. Um, it might be more than you can cover now. If you can't cover all of that, I'd appreciate uh, your getting back to us on we those can get back points. To, we can get back to you. I'll try and uh, do as best I can to, to answer quickly. I think, and again, this is controversial, we have shortages of math and science teachers. We have shortages of foreign language teachers. I think we need to pay those teachers more. We've been talking about math and science t shortages for I don't know, 25 years, 30 years, I'd like to stop talking about it. It is hard for students to be passionate about something that their teachers don't know. It is hard to teach what you don't know. And so many of our students' interest in math and science starts to peter out in sixth and seventh and eighth grade. Guess why? Because the teachers don't know the content. And so with these resources, we want to do a number of things. I want to pay teachers more in those areas of critical need. I would love to send thousands and thousands of teachers back to school to learn the math and to learn the science. And we had numerous partnerships with universities so they can get the endorsements and have the content knowledge. Um, I think that's the only way long term we get more students interested and passionate in staying in the field. And I think it's a real loss for our country in terms of pro productivity when students don't have these kinds of opportunities. So I think we have to look at many pots of money. Again, unprecedented you know, stimulus dollars, unprecedented Title I dollars race the top fund, all of these can be used for professional development. These can be used to pay teachers more to work in areas of critical need. I think we need to be much more thoughtful and creative about how we're creating this structure where every child has access to a great math teacher, a great science teacher. Finally, on foreign language, starting young is absolutely right. Starting high school is late in the game. Starting you know, three-year-olds and four-year-olds and five-year-olds and six-year-olds, it's, it's just like second nature to them. So the more we can provide those opportunities early on, the better students are going to do. Well, uh, you know, decreasing the funding for the math science partnerships, which is the only U.S. Department of Education program that's available across the country to all schools uh, for teacher professional development in science and math. The only program that's out there to reduce it rather than to double it is, uh, is not the right way to go. Um, maybe you have other things in mind, but I'd like the specifics on that. And, and again, with the race to the top funds, if you could be specific about how, how you will be using what funds for science education, uh, I yeah. sure would appreciate uh, hearing it. Sure, and just to correct the record, we actually didn't reduce it. We, we capped it, we level funded it, but it did not get reduced. So it, uh, you know, it's half of what it was when it was the Eisenhower funds a decade well, ago. That, that may be true, but teachers just, need this professional development. Right, no, I, I fully understand, but again, there are unprecedented discretionary resources on the table and to have districts, to have schools step up and invest in those things that make a difference. There has never been this kind, the magnitude of this opportunity. And so there's a huge, huge chance for states and districts to invest in professional development and to invest to pay those teachers, pick a number, five grand, 10 grand, 15 grand more to teach in underserved communities. Never had more latitude to do that. And we look for that creativity to come from, from local districts and local schools. 
Great. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Secretary. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Secretary.